Hi there, my name is Josh and we're on another Cress RTK install uh, just to run you through what we're doing really. So um, we've got our charging station here uh, with our 12 volt power transformer. Uh, we've got some magnetic wire for it to uh, locate the base station. We've got some pegs and of course we've got the uh, the robot robotic mower. Now this one's got the pilot or the head installed. Uh, we'll be removing that shortly so that we can do the map. Um, the customers uh, uh, sorted out some power in the garden here so this is absolutely perfect for locating the uh, the, the charging station on, on the lawn which is great um, so we'll, we'll start installing this now and uh, I'll keep you updated okay so uh, we've got our power station uh, connected to the ground now so we've got it um, we've got the the, the, the ground anchors uh, securely uh, inserted uh, we've got our power so our green light is on let's just show you that there um, we've got around the back here is our 12 volt transformer uh, and then uh, we've got quite a lot of excess cable on this job just because the the, the power source is right next to the, the charging station so uh, we've just, just neatly tacked all this up here so it's off the ground it's not going to get wet it's not going to get nibbled at by uh, animals and vermin and things like that um, so uh, now we uh, now the base station is ready uh, we could get on with mapping the garden uh, so before we can complete the installation of the uh, the charging base, uh, we need to install our magnetic wire. Now this magnetic wire uh, will help guide the machine from the lawn directly onto the charging base. It's not going to miss, it's not going to struggle connecting to its charging prongs or anything like that. Um, so the, the magnetic wire can be um, semi-submersed in the ground, you don't want to bury it too deep because um, the machine has a magnetic sensor on the front of it, uh, which it's going to use uh, to locate the magnetic wire. So if you bury it too deep, uh, the, the, it's not going to be able to see it. So uh, we're not going to bury it at all. We're going to just uh, tack it onto the top of the lawn here and that'll be fine. I'll show you that in just a second. got here is our magnetic wire installed uh, which goes right from the start of the charging station comes down got a bit of a dog leg here and because the magnetic wire currently needs to be five meters long I've had to put another dog leg in it just here um, so hopefully that's gonna be okay time will tell okay here we are so this is our mapping cart 
Now, uh, this is what we're going to use to map the garden, map the perimeter, map any no-go zones, map any paths, routes, things like that. Um, so uh, what this does is it measures wheel rotation as we move. So not only does it uh, record its GPS location, uh, it, it, it will measure the rotations for the wheel which will then uh, help the machine get out of any sticky situations if it loses GPS signal at any point. So while the machine is booting up, uh, I've asked the customer to download the Cress RTKN app. Uh, they have uh, created themselves a username uh, and password and logged in. Um, I've asked them to use a temporary password, so something generic, MOA123, something like that, um, just for the first time, because I'm going to use those details to log in on my phone to do the mapping. Uh, I'll then monitor the machine for the next day or two uh, using my app. Uh, just to make sure that there's not too many notifications, it's not getting stuck or anything like that, or it's losing signal too frequently. Uh, then I'll instruct the customer to change their password, I'll log out, and then they have full control. Okay, so we have the uh, the head or pilot of the off the robot mower that's now fitted to our GPS mapping car. Uh, and you can see there that we've got some flashing lights now. The middle light is the power light, so uh, we're, we're hoping for that one to be green, which it is. Uh, the right hand flashing green light uh, would denote that we have cell signal or, or GSM signal, so that's green, which is great. And then the left hand one is its location, its GPS link, uh, or it's, it's uh, knowing where it is basically uh, so that's currently flashing red now i've only just turned this uh, mapping cart on so we're hoping for that to turn green once we've got three green lights we can start mapping the uh, map in the garden okay so now we've got uh, three green lights we're good to start mapping um, it's always good to make a mental note of exactly where you start because this is exactly where you're going to have to stop uh, so uh, the customer's got this lovely uh, steel hoop. I'm going to start at the very edge of that. And now we do want to give ourselves about five centimetres clearance uh, from any solid objects. So there uh, we go, about five centimetres away from, from that there. Uh, and what we'll do now is we'll calibrate the machine and start mapping. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to film uh, me using the mapping cart because I needed my phone to do the mapping. Uh, but essentially what we're doing is we're walking anti-clockwise with the mapping cart, keeping 50 mil away from the edges, uh, including the docking station in the map, just like that. That's the easy part. Okay, so the mapping is now complete. We've gone around the edge of the garden. We've put the the perimeter in, if you like, the GPS perimeter. And you see we've got all of these really lovely trees which have just been planted, which aren't very firm in the ground yet. Now, this model doesn't have the obstacle avoidance, so I've had to go along and map each uh, single tree, which there are 12 of, as an exclusion zone. So that's taken quite a bit of time to do, um, because every time you start a new exclusion zone, it downloads the map onto your phone so that you can uh, complete the mapping of the no-go zone and then it has to upload all that data. So 12 trees, I've had to do it 12 times. So it's taken a little bit of time. Um, but you can see the result of that just here. The machine's driven up towards the tree. Now this one doesn't have obstacle avoidance, like I've just said, uh, so it can't see the tree. It doesn't have any ultrasonics. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's driven around the tree. Um, so this is just on a, a border cut at the moment. It's doing a bit of testing and things. Uh, this isn't its, its main mo. Uh, I haven't mapped these big hoops uh, because there's uh, pretty solid bars at the bottom of it, which the inbuilt sensors uh, will detect when it when it hits them, which is fine. Um, so the, the 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 grass here is really really long. Uh, we're cutting it at 60 mil at the moment, which is its highest height of cut. Uh, that this machine's capable of um, so uh, yeah it's it, it's it's going to struggle a little bit in places um, it's really boggy as well we've had loads and loads of rain I don't think this garden's got particularly good drainage um, so uh, it's, it's, it's probably going to struggle to start off with but when it gets it down to a manageable length it's going to be absolutely fantastic um, 
the machine at the moment seems to be uh, doing a boundary cut of the no mow zones. So it's just gone around this tree. It's left it in a bit of a mess because all this long cut grass um, has gone everywhere. Uh, but I'm really chuffed that it's been able to navigate these these tiny, tiny no mow zones that we've put in. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're less than a square foot, really. So uh, the, the fact that it can be that accurate is really, really good to see. Okay, so we've finished that install now. Uh, I've done a handover with the customer. They understand how to use the app. They understand how to put in a schedule. I've just scheduled that machine to come out uh, between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. Uh, their garden isn't huge. We've got about 700 square meters and that machine's capable of doing about 2,000 square meters. Uh, I've, I've left the garden, I'm inside my car now because it's uh, got really cold and it's raining. Uh, but yeah, thanks ever so much for watching, guys. If you've got any questions, uh, uh, please comment below and I'll uh, do my best to answer them. Cheers, guys. Bye.